Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome, Pastor David. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. And I love it. And uh, yes, and you know what? It's already Thursday, and the week's going by so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor, you know one of the questions I have been thinking about. You know, in today's society, with everything almost being so instant and quick, and maybe even have it your way type of mentality, mm -hmm. there seems to be the loss within people the loss of forming relationships. And that can go across the board from uh, friendships to, uh, to any type of relationship. But the relationship I'd like to ask you about is the relationship that's romantic. And instead of developing a relationship in today's world, it just seems that couples are really quick to want to quote unquote shack up with one another or move in or, or to develop, the, not even develop this relationship, and I wanted to get your thoughts on on that. What's the big rush? And why is it that people don't see the value in developing the relationship that would ultimately lead to possible marriage? You know, it seems to me exactly what you're saying, that there is a, a rush to intimacy. I believe that when you don't have emotional intimacy, that very often what you'll do is replace it with physical intimacy. And they equate the physical with the emotional. And in doing so, they've removed romance from the relationship. You know, romance is a very important element, I think, of, of uh, developing from friends to those who want to get married. There needs to be a, a certain element of, uh, of attraction that, that places a high value on the person that you're attracted to. And in, in a Christian's life, that value ought to be expressed through the way you cherish and the way you care for and the way you try to help them um, to become the best person they can be. Uh, when you move from an attraction that's physical and many relationships, if not a large percentage, will begin first with a physical attraction. And we know that, I mean, that's been demonstrated through various uh, surveys and means mm -hmm. over the years. I mean, a man will see a woman and within uh, less than a minute, he knows actually almost instantly sometimes whether he's attracted to yeah. her or not. So we have that physical attraction, but you know, when we speak to that woman, perhaps she doesn't connect with us on an intellectual or spiritual level. And, and so the attraction is just physical without anything else going along with that. And so I, I think what has happened, and, and, and I've seen it to be true, is that we have replaced a an interest and sometimes a physical interest, we have replaced that, that uh, an emotional interest with a physical interest. And especially as Christian, our spiritual interest ought to be the first and foremost uh, part of that relationship. Now there are those who would say, well, yeah, that's just an old man talking. Uh, what do you know? And what I know is that uh, in my own case with my, my girlfriend who became my wife, that's what the Lord taught me in terms of um, the intimacies and the levels and right. kinds of it. Because I had prayed and I had asked the Lord that he would help me to go to sleep to my desires the way that he put Adam to sleep. I asked the Lord, would you please put me to sleep to my desires? And um, Lord, in your time, I would ask that you would, you would like you brought Eve to, to Adam, you would, you would bring a girl to me. And uh, I didn't think that was an unreasonable prayer, you know. Maybe for some they would think it to be. For me, I didn't, I, I, because I was aware of my own heart. I was aware of the things that that attracted me. That very often were were the wrong kinds of things, mm. you know. And so that's what I did. And uh, within a short while is when I I met the the young lady who became my wife. And. Uh, and when I met Marie, I was not on a physical plane drawn to her as much as on an emotional plane. She was somebody that, that I liked. She was somebody that, that, that I felt comfortable with, somebody that I could speak to, somebody who, who actually seemed to care about what I thought and how I felt. And there were things like that that became part of our initial relationship. Uh, ultimately, obviously, I began to see her through the eyes of a man looking at a woman, and I began to be attracted to her 
from the, uh, the beauty that mm -hmm. my wife had and still does. But I was blessed in the Lord uh, to begin a relationship with her based on the things that mattered and the things that last. And those things are, are the spiritual. The number one is, does she love the same God that I love? Right. Uh, does she does she enjoy fellowship? Does she does she enjoy worshiping God? Does she enjoy a community of believers? Does she does she want to have other people know who Jesus is? Those things all mattered, and they still do, John. They still matter to me and to my girlfriend who became my wife of all these years now. And so, people are moving into um, sexual intimacy. The, the, the Word of God says that those who fornicate will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he goes on to say, and, and do not be deceived. Mm. And so you can be deceived into thinking that shacking up with somebody, living with somebody, having physical intimacy with some, somebody is just like test driving <laughs> you know, a vehicle. And what you're doing is you're putting your lust in front of what real love is. Because as I was sharing just last night in our Bible study, you know, the element of, of, uh, of love that God has commanded husbands to have to the wives is when Paul said in Ephesians 5 that husbands are to love their wives and, and the way that Christ loved the church. Right. And so all you need to do is, you know that he was sacrificial, but I shared last night in John 13, it, it says Jesus, Jesus loved his men. He loved them to the end. What was love? Well, in John 13, when it says he loved them to the end, knowing that it was his, his hour had come, how did he love them to the end? What is it that, that shows me the love that a husband is to have for a wife? Well, we know that he laid his life down for the church. The Bible makes it clear that's how God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we know that the element of, of sacrifice, mm. but we also know that there's an element of service because he washed the feet of his disciples. Right. And so how did ultimate power, he, he knew that, that he had received all of the, how, how does ultimate power act? Ultimate power acted uh, out by washing the mm. feet. That's amazing. Oh, all, of of, all authority right, was yes, given. Was the first thing he does is he, he knew it. And that's amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's interesting you say that, Pastor, because in the, in, in today's world, everything's so quick, and, and I like what you said, that sometimes in this, there's no development of relationship. It's just like this test-driving type of mentality. Yeah. And, and sometimes when I'm, people are coming in for premarital or uh, those who want to get married, I'll ask them, if physical intimacy was removed from your relationship, how would you express that you would love one another? Right, that's a good question. And they don't know how to answer that sometimes because... Uh, they, they don't understand that the development, as you mentioned, you know, with you and Marie, that the Lord put that to sleep. Mm -hmm. And as you guys developed the relationship and you developed getting to know each other, then there was a time that the Lord awoken you to that. And and then you saw, whoa, behold, woman, right? And and uh, you, you burst out into a song because mm -hmm. uh, you, we see the, the attraction. But there's a part that we have to have, allow the Holy Spirit to do in our lives and to that. And so... I really appreciate that because in today's society, let's just see what happens. Let's do this first. And they're missing out the really important piece of the relationship. Well, a marital life is built on a variety of things. Obviously, you have the, you have the emotional. You know, my wife actually meets the emotional needs that a human being should be able to meet in my life. She does. There's obviously the, uh, the, the physical. You know, my wife is you know, been my, my, my sweetheart for a long time. We have beautiful children together and all. There's that, there's this obvious physical attraction. But it's been the spiritual, John, mm. that has kept Marie and me. It's, it's the desire to do things that are proper and right before the eyes of the Lord. And those things develop over time, mm. you know, but, but they do develop if you're seeking God together. And so, you know, there's too many studies that, that have been done. I remember when I was in college and I was looking up elements that that um, create a, a, a marriage relationship that will last. And then it was always included within that. It was always the spiritual, always. You know, uh, it's, it's unusual, even in our day, for someone to marry somebody else that they don't connect on a spiritual plane with. But when you have somebody 
that is spiritually attuned to you and you together can worship the same God, that, uh, that creates that threefold cord that isn't mm -hmm. easily broken. And so when you put the physical in front of the spiritual emotional, when you substitute uh, physical, because the physical is, is something that is, can be filled with passion and, and uh, instant gratification and all of that. But you know, what, what causes you to know what love is, is, is much beyond that. It's, it's the yielding of yourself to the wishes of somebody else so that they can benefit even at what may be a cost to you. It's, it's the encouragement of that person to walk right with God, to love His Word, to, to, to pray together, and, and the variety of things that you do, attend uh, church together and, and serve God together. All of those things are what kept Marie and me together, and we've, we've been doing that now for quite a number of years. And, and so when the young people are, are coming to church and all they're really looking for is a hookup or, or, or something like that, they're really missing out. Because if they seek the Lord first and, and His righteousness, all right. things shall be added unto them. And that includes relationships. That includes that, that what would seem to be coinc coincidental moment of right. meeting. Because right. I was coming from Norwalk and my, my, the girl God had uh, put in my life was, was out here in Chino. There was no reason for me to travel to the San Bernardino County. There's no reason to do that other than the Lord uh, drew, drew me here because my, my brother had gotten saved and he needed some uh, follow-up and some ministry. So my sister and I would drive to uh, his place in Ontario, gave him Bible study, and, and that's how God brought a young woman who needed to know God. Uh, that's how that works so that we met. And ultimately, here we are 40-some years later wow. um, serving the Lord. So yeah, it, it is really, it's not only a sin, and it's a sin that God says, don't be deceived. This is the reason the wrath of God comes upon you is because of fornication and the other things that are related to that. Don't be deceived into thinking, oh, you know, we, we love each other. Who needs a piece of paper, etc." <laughs> you know, that, that, that we, we were part of that all the way back in the 60s. Ah, oh, you know, a piece of paper doesn't bind my heart to you. Well, that may be true, but it's also a contract that, that demonstrates a solidity and an intent. I intend to remain with you until the day that I die. And my vow is to God, but I've also made a legal contract that demonstrates that. It's a serious relationship. So people who have multiple uh, roommates, you know, they're, they're diminishing themselves right. every time because that person they slept with will remain with them forever. Even if they're physically not next to them, they'll always be within them because the sexual connection is something that lasts. And people don't realize don't that, but it lasts and it, it leaves an impression in their heart. So when that husband sleeps with that wife, they're sleeping not only with those two people, but every other person they ever slept with is in that bed with wow, them at that's that time. A, When you look at it, that, I mean, that's a great perspective to look at it so that way. So be aware of those things. Wow. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for shedding some light on that because again, it, it, you know, it's backwards it seems like today. It is. And, uh, but again, the blessing of God's hand in the in the institution of marriage, especially on in consuming the marriage together, and, and right in His eyes, there's that wonderful mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. And so, well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed our topic today. Uh, you can also uh, tune into YouTube, our YouTube page, to look for any previous is unfiltered or any Pastor David's previous Bible studies. There's a whole library you can go through if you. Uh, and you can go by any of the books of the Bible and you'll see his teachings on there. Uh, come join us on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45 as, uh, Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Yep. And uh, just about wrapping it up pretty soon. Well, probably within the next couple months. <laughs> it's going to be a while. <laughs> and we do want to invite you to our December 18th Sunday morning services as the Katinas will be joining us. Looking forward to it. be 8.30 and 10.45 and then Christmas Eve service which will be Friday the following week, or excuse me, Saturday the following week on the 24th at 6 p.m. And then our Sunday morning services will be Christmas morning, 8.30 and 10.45. You can go to our website for more information. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family. Pastor, again, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this afternoon. Church family, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you. God bless you.